Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on, tuning in, clicking links. Whatever mystical, magical internet brought you here, we're glad you came to the HWWS Web TV channel. We are at the Melbourne Square Mall with authors in a box. The mall is the box, and we put a bunch of authors in it, which is going to get crazy, but we did it anyway. And right now we are hanging out with one of one of those the crazy. We found crazy. It was in the aisle. We're hanging out with our good friend Steve Altier, the author of Lizardville. Steve, man, how you been? GW, it's good it to see you again. It has been what? But about a year? Two it's years two now. Two years now, yes, right? Since I've seen you. Wow. Time flies, man. How you doing? I'm great. Doing yeah. Good. Been We're gonna the catch busy. guys. Just you guys stay there. We're gonna catch up. It's been two years. <laughs> um, so, where has this crazy, wonderful life taken you in the last couple of years, man? I've um, been really busy um, focusing on, you know, writing more books. Um, just released the second, second book, uh, Lizardville, The Ghost Story, or, or uh, Jimmy's Curse, which was the sequel to The Ghost Story. Wow. Um, it's a two-part miniseries, and between the two now, it's won five different awards. So that is awesome, man. Congratulations. Doing, doing really well, and I'm really pleased. So. What are readers saying? Um, they're loving it. Yeah. So that's that's all that really matters to me. I it, mean, the fans is. love it, and it's that's what I like. It's about making that connection, right, with those readers and those mm -hmm. fans. Yes. So um, let's remind everybody about Lizardville in general. Let's remind them, what is Lizardville, and where did this crazy idea come from? Uh, Lizardville is a small town. Well, it's actually not a town. Mill Hall is where I grew up. Uh -huh. There was a road called Lizardville Road, and that is where I got the idea for Lizardville. You know, when I was a kid, back growing up in the late 70s, you know, there was an old broken down dam, an old axe factory there. So we used to go out and camp and fish and hunt and all that stuff. And I just decided that one day I was going to write my story, you know, but it wasn't really, wasn't fancy enough, wasn't fascinating enough. So I added that paranormal element to it. You know, okay. it's something that, you know, I felt it would really spice the story up, and it did. It, it worked out well. The first book was uh, Lizardville, The Ghost Story, which came out in uh, 2016. It's won a couple awards. And then we finally, it, it, sorry for to all the readers out there, but it took me a couple of years to get the second book out. Um, and this is, is a two-book miniseries. And this was Lizardville, Jimmy's Curse, which answers all the questions. Um, originally, I had decided to write one book. Uh, it was a, this was a standalone story, um, but I had so many readers coming back asking me questions on Goodreads that, you know, is there going to be more? Is there going to be a second book, a third book? You know, best what happened with this character? Feedback, what happened best with feedback that ever is when, they're, when they are, they've suspended their disbelief, they've entered your world, and they don't want to leave. Right. They want more. That's the best feedback you could possibly get as, as a creative artist, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. fascinating to me. Um, so tell us about, let's go back to the first book real quick. We're going to remind everybody, and then we're going to go to the new book. So the ghost story. Tell us, yes. a, give us the book blurb on the ghost story. Okay, the ghost story is set in the 1970s. It's about a group of young teenage boys going out along the banks of Big Fishing Creek. There's an old axe factory there and an old broken down dam. When the first night out there, the oldest boy tries to scare everybody, and he tells the legends of the Axe Factory murders, Ooh. and they wake up the spirit world. This, this is a common problem with our youth today. Around the campfire, they tend to wake up the spirit world an awful yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, that you sit do. around the campfire, <laughs> and you tell the stories, and somehow you manage to do it in such a way as that you wake stuff up. Yes. I've been I've been watching uh, some some of the uh, recent uh, you know things on Amazon and Netflix as they're doing production now, right? More and more stories usually start with a group of teens. Yep. Teens or tweens. <laughs> so. And 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 from there, hijinks is bound to ensue. Oh, absolutely. As it does. Yes. So let's flash forward a little bit. Now we are moving ahead to. Uh, what do we have here? We have Jimmy's Curse. Yeah, so in the first... So this was Jimmy's fault. We want you to know that. This is... Jimmy is definitely in... in uh, how, how is Jimmy cursed? Tell us... To, give us a non-spoilery uh, lowdown here. Um, 
without giving too much away on the first book. No, no, we're going to make them buy it. They're okay, going to go good. down below. They're going to click a link. And they're going to buy the book. So <laughs> don't tell them any more than they have to know. So Jimmy finds himself cursed, and he, he really wants to kind of break that curse, and, and his friends want to help him in the second book. Oh, yeah, they were really helpful in the first book. They woke up the spirit world. <laughs> so, Jimmy, you should get better friends. It probably should, right? Probably, right? Yeah. I was one of them friends. You so were it. one of the friends. Oh, see? <laughs> Jimmy, you really got to get better friends. Yeah. Me too, for that matter. If you meet better friends, put a link down below so I can find them. Because these are my friends. This is what happens. <laughs> so, Jimmy, um, you know, in the second book, all the friends are get gathered together. They're doing research. How can they help him break this curse? Um, and that's really where the story goes. And at the final scene, they end up in the graveyard. They're trying to put the ghost back where they belong. Which is a good idea. If you wake them up, you've got to put them back to bed. Right. That is exactly how you're supposed to do that. Um, how long has Jimmy's Curse been out there now? Um, it has been on the market since June. It came out in June. Um, how you doing, man? How's it going? It's going very well. And it actually has won three different awards. We got a... Uh, it won for the best cover with, on a website called Authors it, it Database. It is a beautiful cover. I love, I'm, I'm a big fan of the photorealistic covers. I really am. I think they're great, um, especially when they're able to manipulate the photo and, and give it a sense of what's inside. Yeah. You tell a story. Art is, whether you're writing books or painting paintings or taking pictures, art is about telling a story. Correct. And, and Jimmy's having a bad day. And you could tell that he's in the graveyard. If you are in a graveyard and a crow lands on a head, leave. <laughs> they are never good. They do not bring good news ever. Um, so it's funny so, you would mention that about yeah. a crow because I kind of have a friend with me here today. Oh, what do you got? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. What do we have? And we just happen to have. Oh, look at that. We, 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 oh, my Lord. This is Annabelle. This is, An this is Annabelle. This is Annabelle. She oh, plays a wow. role in the story. And, uh, and uh, so now, is it, are bad things going to start happening now? He's already here. Too late. <laughs> See what I did there? No, wow. They're not, they're going to take a minute, but they'll catch up. But he, Annabelle, huh? And, but you can pet her. I mean, she don't bite. Yeah, I, you he, sure? Not anymore. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wow, that's, you know, it is, uh, we, a lot of times we, when we talk to our authors, we know, we talk about the creative process. Correct. Yeah. And, uh, and about the writing process and publishing. But uh, I think people tend to forget that after we, after we send it off to the editors, after we get it out there to the world, we have another job and that is to sell it. Correct. And to market it, and ourselves as authors and creators, right? Yes. Um, and it is always interesting for me to see what uh, what the mind of a creator comes up with as those attention-getting moments. So we have Annabelle here. Yes. And she is, I'm gathering, she's getting some attention for Jimmy's Curse now. Yes. Um, and she's a character. Yes, she is in, she's actually in both the books. She's in um, both books, okay. She's there right she is. Here. Annabelle's up there. Oh, she's flying across and the screen. She's up flying there. across the screen she's up here. Got a here. friend on this on the on the go in a ghost well, story. There's more than one. She she doesn't just fly alone. Ah, oh, yeah. She. Yeah, they that's stick a together. Lot of I, I I've read enough Stephen King to know that they stick together. And then again, watch yourself. Watch yourselves with the blackbirds. <laughs> that's right. When calls the raven, we know something is wrong. Um, that's a Poe reference. You. Oh. Some, we have to start at the beginning sometimes. We, yes, we, okay, I'm sorry. We yeah. to, we have to start at the beginning sometimes so they know who we're talking about. Um, you are working on the audiobooks. And you, uh, tell us about that process. How much fun was that, putting um, these out? Well, I'm not the narrator because no one really wants to hear me tell my, tell my own me story. Me neither, and this is my living, brother. So <laughs> <laughs> You do much better at it than I do. So <laughs> Thank you. But, um, no, I've... I've, uh, the first audio book is out for um, the ghost story. That one's out. And we're currently working. We're still auditioning voice actors for the second book. Um, what, um, what kind of audio readings uh, do you prefer uh, as you're auditioning and things like that? There, is, there are kind of two schools of thought here in audio books today. Um, one is sort of that um, 
you go back to what was books on tape, that sort of, you know, a reader's voice. Um, and the other is someone who gets more into the, you know, character design and, and you know, it's almost a voice actor, you know, doing a radio program of your book. And right. what do you prefer? What are you looking for? I'm, I'm looking for a, that unique voice, something that grabs your attention, you know, that guy that goes, well, the shadow knows that everything is about to happen. You know, if, if, if Orson Welles is out there, then Steve is ready for you. You know, we just if, in fact, you're, if you're an Orson Welles impersonator, Steve is waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it, it's that unique voice, something that grabs my attention. Um, I've listened to some audition tapes and some of them are just so monotone. It's like blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, there tends yeah. to be again, there tends to be that two schools thing yes. where you have that old, uh, what was it, Audiovox, remember the books on tape? Yes. And it was very, very much a person reading a book to you, and you felt that. Correct. Um, whereas a lot, a lot more authors now are choosing to go with voice personalities, people who can deliver a performance of Correct. your book. And, um, and that seems to be really popular with a lot of readers, uh, listeners. Are they readers if they're listening? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, when I, when I own Goodreads, when I listen to a book, and I, I still get credit for reading the book. That's true, I do. That is absolutely true. And I listen to a lot more now as I get older, because it hurts my eyes less. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. I, I brought these with the me cheaters, just in yeah, case I've got, I needed I've it. got a pair of those for when I'm not on camera, because I need them sometimes just to get yeah. through. So. Um, now that the Lizardville miniseries is out there, what's next for the, the author, Steve Altier? Are you working on any projects? What do you got going? What's, I am currently working on a story called The Ghost Hunter. The Ghost Hunter. So this, this, this whole series um, took place in 1975 to 1976. Okay. Um, and I will say in the second book, the kids go to the library. And Johnny's the main, one of the main characters. So Johnny goes to the library, him and his friends. They're trying to do some research where they could help, you know, Jimmy break his curse. And they find two books written by a, character, by a gentleman named Gerald Dupickle. Yes, that's what he said. Gerald Dupickle. See, he said it twice. You can't forget it now. And Joe is a... So, so Gerald is an author, but... The kids are fascinated with his, the way he explains things, the way he you know, tells them how to help their friend um, in these books. So in the new book that I'm writing, The Ghost Hunter, it goes back to the 1960s, and we're going to learn a little bit about the life of Gerald Dupickle. Wow. That's awesome. You know, I really do love it when uh, a writer creates a universe that he can dive into and play all over space and time within that same universe because it's I think that's fun for readers today to be able you know it, today's uh, audience if you will for whether it's reading books going to the movies listening to podcasts whatever they like those tie-ins they like those things that are coming together cool. collective yeah. universe yes um, you know and we see that in, on the big screen we see that with the Marvel franchise and Star Wars but we also see it in our in our literature today series do really well and mm -hmm. series that spin off from other series where there's a tie-in do really well um what what is it that drove you to decide to say i'm going to stay i'm going to play in this universe some more um i really wanted to talk a little bit more about ghost hunting and what it takes and because i had time put a timeline on the lizardville series i had to tie i had to go back prior to that if i wanted to use the same character's name and it was fascinating to me because I, I don't really know much about the 60s, so I had to do a lot of research on the 60s, um, and I'm trying to get all that facts correct before I publish this book. Um, but Gerald Dupickle is a young 16-year-old kid. He's a brainiac. He's one point shy of being a genius on his IQ score, and he's more like a, a Sheldon Cooper. He's a clumsy, awkward kid, and he finds himself in college at the age of 16. And he's wanting so bad to make friends with everybody, but he's got this awkward personality about him. And he runs into a group of guys that are ghost hunters. And he's like, well, scientifically, they don't exist. You know, they just can't. 
until he realizes that he's like a magnet. He draws them out. So, which is a good quality to have if you're going to be a ghost hunter. Yeah. To bring them to you, less hunting. So they get him to go along. He's going to prove to them that it's, it's impossible to meet a ghost. And then once he actually meets a ghost, he wants to figure out how can we prove to the world that, you know, ghosts really do exist. And what was challenging as a writer was like, for me, I'm going back there and I'm thinking, okay, now, if they had a cassette recorder, uh, when was the cassette recorders out? When did they come out? And, okay, it came out in 1963, so I can, I can use that. Now it I got a high it. end, by the way, 1963 cassette recorder uh, yeah. would, have been, would have been a high end pro uh, uh, product. Well, I think it was 1964, 65 that they become pretty popular. They sold like a quarter million uh, units, the handheld units at the time. So a lot of research had to go into that. It is, to make it's sure. great, that's fantastic. You know, it, I think to be a great writer, you're, you are obviously a storyteller, but also a very heavily a student. Oh, absolutely. A student of an era or time period or just life in general, watching how the world works. Because if you're gonna write about something faithfully, you have to do the, do the homework. Oh, absolutely. There's always homework. That speaking of homework, apparently we are supposed to go do ours because she's got that card to tell Steve and I that we have been talking and having way too much fun. So we are going to sign off by thanking our friends at Brevard Film and Talent, Famous Faces and Funnies, Josh Bauer at J Bauer Art for all the art that's on our set. Our great new friends from here in the mall, we've got the Echo Arts and Gifts Company who gave us uh, for our set this weekend our great anime uh, Japanese fan here, which is really awesome. Our great friends at Space Coast Comics, our great friend B and her team over at Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida. Be sure to check them out. That's families helping other families throughout Central Florida. It's really That's awesome. Great. It's the holiday season, so help out wherever you can. In the meantime, guys, we've been hanging out with author Steve Altier. We're going to drop links down below so you can find Lizardville, the Lizardville books. It's a mini series. You can find Lizardville, the ghost story, and then Jimmy's Curse. You can find those online. Hit the links down below and grab a book. Uh, just grab a book for, for somebody. These are, these are uh, aimed at uh, anyone, really. So even the yeah. mid-teens and the YA readers can enjoy these oh, absolutely. Uh, a, a lot, as well as adult readers. So it's a great present uh, if you're getting ready to go through the holidays right now. If, uh, it, so hit the links down below. Again, we're hanging with author Steve Altier. I'm GW Pominger. This is the HWWS Web TV channel. Come back later. Subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Steve, thank you, man. That's thank you awesome. so much. Very it's been a good. pleasure, man. That was awesome. That was great. Thank you.